Hi everyone and welcome to this week's NAV uh, know-how session. Um, today we're going to be covering the a few points, um, basically how to create a test system, and loading objects, um, the import worksheet which is given to you when you load an object or export an object, um, well yeah when you load an object and the best practices for that. Uh, this is only going to cover um, classic client Navision, Dynamics Nav. Um, it's going to be from 2009 R2 and below, so that covers 2009, 2009 SP1, Nav 5.0, Nav 4.0, Nav 3.7, um, all of the SQL variety. Okay, let's get started. Um, so today we're going to be working with a demo database, so I'll show you that first. And here it is, it's um, just a Cronus out the box. Uh, this is what the database is called, Demo Database 6, uh, 6.0 with the Cronus company, um, that's the only one that's in it. So the first thing we'll do is we're going to take a backup of the database and we're going to restore it and create our test database. Once we've done that, we're going to then um, check we've configured it correctly, log into it and load an object. So this is how most people should have their system set up. They should have a test database so any releases they get they can test um, in a safe environment that isn't their production environment. Okay, so to do that, um, there's two ways to back up your database. You can do tools, backup in the older versions. I would not recommend that just because it's much quicker in um, SQL. So we will do that. So we'll come out of nav. We're going to go to the SQL Server Management Studio, we're going to find our database, so you will have to have the, sp the right um, elevation inside of SQL to be able to um, back up databases. So ideally you should be um, a DBO or a sysadmin or whatever your IT guys have um, given you. So what we'll do is we'll right click our, um, we'll go into the databases and we'll go find our database, right click it, go to tasks, then we're going to back up. Then we're going to save it to disk. Um, so we're just going to add a location where we're going to back it up to. So if we go drill down and find somewhere in our file system that's. Um, I'll just put it in temp for today. We'll give it a name. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Um, we'll call it test db. So it's going to be a copy of our live database. And then we're going to kick off the backup. Um, just point out this is on my local PC, so it's got um, it's got SQL on it. it d it's not like I have a separate SQL server and then um, I'm connecting to it. It's all on the same machine. Okay, so I've backed up my database. So we'll press OK, and if we go and have a look at that, it should have been created in CTemp. There it is. If we just look at the date modified. Uh, 933. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to restore that database. So we right click our databases, restore, go and choose it, and we can go drill down. Um, now, this is one way of doing it. I'll show you another way afterwards. Um, so this, it, whatever way works best for you. Um, we can go find it. Uh, we're going to have to change it to all files because it doesn't have the extension on. Um, I forgot to put that on. It doesn't really matter. There it is. Test DB. Press OK. OK, so now what it's done is it's um, it's picked up. There are um, There's a backup set in there. Now, if we go and take off tail log, we don't need that. And restore as. We're going to go make sure it's called something different. Test DB. Uh, yeah, let's call it that. Test DB1. Let's make sure it's unique. And we'll do the log file as well. Okay, good. So if we press OK, that will go and create this new database. Um, and we need to give it a name as well. Test DB1. Okay, that should be restoring that now. 
That's one way of doing it. However, there is a, a simpler way. Um, so we'll do that as well, just so you can see both ways. So what we can do is we can actually right click on databases, restore database, and we can just use an existing database as the, so instead of having to back it up to a file and then restore it, um, which is, I think, um, I like that method, but this, this one works as well. It's um, simple. Then we call the destination, test db1. So it's going to copy it from this database. It's going to store it to this database. It, we're going to make sure the files are unique. Um, this should have done that for us already. It has. It's gone and taken it from the database name. We're going to turn off tail log and press OK. And that will do exactly the same thing. So we, we haven't saved it to a file and then re, re um, restored it. We're just taking it from the existing database. So it's a little bit quicker doing it that way. But it's two ways to do it. Um, okay, so we've made our database. So now if we go into our nav client, they, they all look similar. So um, I'm just using the latest of the 2009. If we drill down into our databases, we can now see here is our test DB1. So if we go into that, and as it's a, uh, an exact copy, it'll have all the same permissions and users and everything like that in it. Um, I'm using, if you do it on the same SQL Server, um, maybe a bit different if you're transferring it to an, a new SQL Server, but if this is on the same SQL um, this scenario. Okay, now we're going to import an object. So to do that, we're going to open up the object designer. You're going to need to have um, ideally super rights inside of nav. So we're going to open up the database, open up whatever company, um, doesn't really matter. Open up your object designer, we're going to do file, import. We're going to go find our objects, release. And now it's going to say, do you want to open up the import worksheet? And we're going to say yes. Um, it's always good practice to do that. We're going to say no, in fact. No to open the import worksheet. Because it didn't see any conflicts, so it didn't want to open it up. Um, generally, if you get a release from wherever, it will be different and it will open up the import worksheet as default. Um, because there'd be no change between the two. It, um it was okay just to import it in. So in the import worksheet, it's um, you can basically see what the differences are between the version list and the date modified on the object. As you can see here, there has been no modifications to the object. So the one we're importing in is actually exactly the same. Hence, it didn't really want to open it up for us. But we can do um, replace all and then OK. And that is our new object imported in. So We've, we've copied the database, we've restored it to the new database, opened it up, imported our test object. Okay, so let's um, let's do that again, but with a modified object, so we can kind of see um, what the real world scenario would be. So, for example, um, let's go into a different database, the original. We'll go find the order conf. We will mod just put in um, some documentation that will modify it. Okay, so it's um, date modified to change to today. So if we export that and then we go and re-import it into our test database. Um, no conflicts were found, so it still says you're okay to import. Let's open up the import worksheet, but we should get some differences now. Uh, let's have a look. So we can see that the existing object, um, it was last touched in 2009 because it's just a Cronus object. It was released back then. I've gone and modified it today uh, in from the new object from porting, 
Um, the version is the same, so I haven't modified that. But inside the um, object, uh, it's changed slightly. I added that piece of documentation. Um, so we're happy to do replace all. If, if it does see conflicts, it may say um, merge. But as a rule of thumb, unless told otherwise, you should always do replace all. Okay, and that imports it in. So it is very simple to make a um, test database in, in the older versions um, and then import your own objects. So we've covered those two bases, um, loading objects and the import worksheet. But the best practices for this, um, generally I'd say if you're going to make a test database, um, keep it up to date if you can and uh, make sure all the, the objects in your live database sync up with your test. Um, it's often the case where they might get out of, out of line and that causes issues because you'll have a mismatch in the future going forward. As long if they're in, if, if they're both in synch synchronization with each other, you won't have any issues with objects going forward, um, and you won't overwrite any modifications that get done. Also, if you do any changes yourself in the database, which you're welcome to do, um, do them all in your test first, and then test them, obviously. Um, and then once you're happy, then you can release them out to your live database. Um, and that's it's simple to export objects it's just file export highlighted on whatever object or you could um if you just wanted to do a range of objects you could put in filters just using the standard nav filtering i'll just export that okay we'll have a look at it so there we go it's um very quick one today there isn't that much to the older versions. In the newer versions, they've gone to change the. Um, oh, and in 2009, R2, in the role tailored environment, you need to have a service as well. Um, and I'll be covering that on a, another video. Um, but for the time being, um, yeah. If you have any questions, you can always email me. Um, thank you.